So pretty much the last thing we want to talk about uh, in torsion is when they're statically indeterminate. And so the rod that we're looking at on this slide, uh, the, uh, lar or the, the dark ends associated with it are, are intended to demonstrate that it is supported or constrained at both ends, A and C. So it is not free to twist at either A or C. Uh, so the torque applied in the middle is going to twist the cross section at B, but it is gonna to have to return to a zero angle of twist at both A and C. So if we look at this from a reactions perspective, we see that we have a, a reaction at A and a reaction at C, but we only have one equation of static equilibrium, which is the sum of the torques about the axis, uh, X axis uh, is equal to zero, and thus it is statically indeterminate. So going back to superposition and going back to how we did statically indeterminate uh, problems in axial load, we need to use superposition and derive a compatibility equation to allow us to solve these problems. Looking at the displacements. So looking at these displacements, what do we know? We know that the angle of twist at both A and C is equal to zero. And when summed between A and C would be equal to zero. So somewhere in there is the solution to your compatibility equation that is going to allow you to solve these problems. So if that wasn't enough, we have, of course, then a sample problem. Again, I invite you to follow this link to look at this problem solved out in longhand to derive the compatibility equation for the problem and resolve the uh, reactions at both A and C. When you've done that, to build on that, we have a subsequent example getting a little bit more complicated. I think I actually pulled this sample off a, an old exam somewhere uh, where we looked at a shaft uh, between A, B, and C. We've added the extra wrinkle to say, hmm, what if part of the shaft is made with one material and the rest of the shaft is made with a different material? And how will that change how we have to solve the problem? It, it doesn't change it much. It's not particularly hard. Remember, you have to break it down, get the reactions, get the torque force diagram, apply the internal torques over the length that they're applied. And of course, because we have J and G, they have to be constant J and G over those sections and we can sum them up. So follow the, uh, the link, go to the solution, uh, see it out in longhand, and you should be able to start to get the flow for applying superposition to statically indeterminate torsion problems.